Hello friends, in this video we will talk about 3D Gaussian splatting, a technology that opens the doors to a new era and brings science fiction movies to the real world. Developed by pioneering researchers from INRIA and the Max Planck Institute, this revolutionary technique signals how it will shape our digital world. <music> 3D Gaussian splatting opens the door to recreating scenes with photorealism and in real time. So why is this technology so important? And why are we standing here now on the cusp of this moment of technological progress? In our video, we explore the answers to these questions. We take a deep dive into the science behind 3D Gaussian splatting, how this technology works, and what it can offer us in the future. If you're ready, let's start this journey that pushes the boundaries of science. Before we begin, it is important to briefly explain the term Gaussian. The term Gauss is often used in two different contexts, each related to different areas of science. The first is Carl Friedrich Gauss. Gauss was a German mathematician, astronomer and physicist who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries. He made many important contributions in mathematics, astronomy and physics. He worked in many fields such as number theory, statistics, differential geometry, magnetism and optics. Gauss's name is given to many theorems and concepts such as the Gaussian distribution, normal distribution, in mathematics and Gauss's law in physics. The latter is the Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. The Gaussian distribution is a very common probability distribution in statistics and probability theory. It is used for data sets that are symmetrically distributed around a certain mean value. The graph of a Gaussian distribution has the characteristic bell curve shape. This distribution is widely used to model distributions of random variables in natural and social phenomena. Both uses reflect the depth and breadth of Carl Friedrich Gauss's contributions to science and mathematics. Gauss's work is still a cornerstone of modern science and engineering. So what is 3D Gaussian splatting? 3D Gaussian splatting is a rasterization technique that enables the real-time creation of photorealistic scenes learned from small image samples. This means the following. First, having the data that defines the scene. The second is to draw the data on the screen. This is similar to triangle rasterization in computer graphics, which is used to draw many triangles on the screen. But instead of triangles, Gauss's are used. Here is a single rasterized Gaussian with a border drawn for clarity. 3D Gaussian splatting is defined by the following parameters. Position, location, x, y, z, covariance, how it is stretched, scaled, 3x3 matrix, color, which color it is, RGB, alpha, how transparent it is, A. In practice, more than one Gaussian is drawn at the same time. What you see here are three Gaussians. What about seven million Gaussians? Here is what each Gaussian looks like when it is randomized to be completely opaque. This was a very brief overview of what 3D Gaussian splatting is. Let's dive a little into the procedure described in the research paper on the subject. How does 3D Gaussian splatting work? Polycam shots created with LiDAR or photogrammetry represent 3D data as polygonal meshes with corresponding image textures. <music> 3D Gaussian splatting represents a 3D scene as a 3D Gaussian with millions of particles. Each 3D Gaussian comes with a position, orientation, scale, opacity, and appearance-dependent color. To render these particles efficiently, they are converted to 2D space, i.e. splatted, and then organized or sorted for performant rendering. Here are the details. Step 1. Structure from motion. The first step is to use the structure from motion method to estimate a point cloud from a set of images. This is a method for estimating a 3D point cloud from a series of 2D images. This can be done with the Colmap library. Step 2. Conversion to Gaussians. Each point is then converted into a Gaussian. This is already enough for rasterization, but only position and color can be extracted from the motion to structure data. We need to train it to learn a representation that gives high quality results. Step 3. Training step. The training procedure uses stochastic gradient descent similar to a neural network but without layers. 
Stochastic Gradient Descent, by the way, is a popular optimization algorithm used to train machine learning and deep learning models. And these training steps consist of four phases. First stage, teaching Gaussians to rasterize an image using differentiable Gaussian rasterization. Differentiable Gaussian rasterization refers to the idea of creating images using Gaussian distributions and being able to optimize this process with machine learning models. Second stage, calculate the loss based on the difference between the rasterized image and the real image. The third step is to adjust the Gaussian parameters according to the loss. The fourth step is to apply automatic intensification and cleaning. Steps one to three are conceptually quite simple. Step four is, if the gradient for a given Gaussian is large, i.e. very inaccurate, split or clone it. If the alpha of the Gaussian is too low, remove it. Information. This procedure helps Gaussians to better adapt to fine-grained details by pruning unnecessary Gaussians. After the third main step, training, comes the fourth step, differentiable Gaussian rasterization. As I mentioned before, 3D Gaussian splatting is a rasterization approach that draws the data to the screen. But some important elements are that it is fast and differentiable. You can download the original implementation of the rasterizer from the link in the video description. Rasterization is the process of projecting each Gaussian in 2D from the camera perspective, sorting the Gaussians by depth, and for each pixel, iterating through each Gaussian from front to back to put them together. It is also important that the rasterizer is differentiable, so that it can be trained with stochastic gradient descent. But this is only about training. Trained Gaussians can also be generated by a non-derivative approach. Of course, some friends may not understand what I'm saying in this sentence, but to elaborate, I am talking about a technique used in a machine learning process. First of all, the phrase, the rasterizer is differentiable, means that the method used is mathematically sensitive to changes and can calculate the direction in which these changes should be made. This makes it possible to learn how to improve the model step by step using a method called stochastic gradient descent, which I explained earlier. Stochastic gradient descent is an optimization method used to improve the performance of the model. However, as I mentioned, this only applies to the training phase of the model. So, we use this differentiable structure during the training phase of the model because it allows the model to learn better and improve itself. But once the model has been trained, this differentiable structure is not necessary when the model uses the knowledge gained to generate new images. So, who cares? Why has 3D Gaussian splatting attracted so much attention? The obvious answer is that the results speak for themselves, real-time, high-quality scenes. But there may be more to the story. There are many unknowns about what else can be done with Gaussian splatting. Can they be animated? The upcoming Dynamic 3D Gaussians, Permanent Dynamic Appearance Synthesis, suggests that they can. But there are many more unknowns. Can they make reflections? Can they be modeled without training on reference images? Finally, research interest in embodied AI is growing. This is an area of AI research where state-of-the-art performance is still far below human performance, and much of the challenge lies in representing 3D space. Given that 3D Gaussian splatting provides a very dense representation of 3D space, what could be the implications for embodied AI research? These questions draw attention to the method. It is not yet known what the actual impact will be. We will wait and see. Now let's look at the impact of this technology on the field of graphic design in the future. So what does this technology mean for the future of graphics? Let's break it down into pros and cons. Pros, creating high quality, photorealistic scenes, fast, real-time rasterization. It could open the door to new methods as they would be relatively quicker to train. Cons, high VRAM usage, 4GB to display and 12GB to train. Large disk size, 1GB or more for an average scene, incompatible with existing processing pipelines and for now, we can show it as being static rendering. So far, this technique and method has not been adapted to production pipelines like the original CUDA implementation Vulkan, DirectX, WebGPU, etc., so it remains to be seen what the impact will be. However, some applications have already started to adapt to this technology. WebGPU renderers, WebGL renderer, Unity renderer, Blender, Unreal Engine, and Polycam Gaussian splatting. But will we ever see 3D Gaussian splatting fully re-implemented in a production environment? The answer is probably yes. The primary bottleneck is sorting millions of Gaussians, 
which was done efficiently in the original implementation using Cub device radix sorting, a highly optimized sort only available in CUDA. But with enough effort, it certainly seems possible to achieve this level of performance on other pipelines. We'll wait and see where this technology goes, but in the meantime, we'll of course touch on another technology, NERF technology. See you in the next unique video. Take care, research and learn. Goodbye.